Watch yourself, profligate. Yo, what is going on, fellow profligates? Your favorite family-friendly YouTuber here, and I love Fallout New Vegas. It is by far one of my favorite games, if not the best game in the entire world. It trumps every other single game that's ever been made, and I want to make videos on it, so if you guys would like to see more Fallout New Vegas videos, make sure you guys hit the like button, and also comment what is your favorite Fallout New Vegas companion. I'm kind of curious to know. Mine's Veronica, because, you know, punching stuff, and she's absolutely adorable. But today, we are going to be taking a look at every single unique pistol in Fallout New Vegas, and this is going to be including the DLCs, but we will not be including energy weapons. If this video does well enough, I will do an entirely separate energy weapon video, same thing with snipers and rifles, etc, etc. So to kick this off, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite pistols. We're going to be talking about a Light and Shining Darkness. Now this is a DLC pistol and was included in the Honest Hearts DLC with everyone's favorite, Joshua Graham. Now with Honest Hearts, they introduced a lot of new weapons and one of the weapons is going to be a 45 auto pistol. And a Light and Shining Darkness is a unique version of that pistol. It's going to have a greater DPS over the original 45 auto pistol. It's going to have a higher critical hit chance and damage, a higher rate of fire and durability. The usual 45 auto pistol is only going to be able to handle about 745 shots of just regular standard ammo and a light and shining darkness is going to be able to take about 1245 shots before it actually breaks so you're going to have a lot more shots with this weapon than you would with just the regular default 45 auto and also with this weapon when you ads you will zoom in a lot farther than you would with its regular counterpart and this weapon is also going to be a holdout weapon which means if you have a sneak skill of 50 and or higher you will be able to sneak this into casinos or any other place that would take your weapon when you enter now I'm not going to lie, this is definitely one of my favorite weapons in the game and there are two ways to get it. The first way is to just kill Joshua Graham. The second you come across him, you just kill him and you take it right off his dead body. As simple as that. But then you are killing Joshua Graham, one of the most well-written characters of all time and I'm not a huge fan of that because Joshua Graham, pretty cool guy. Even though, you know, back in the day he might, he may have committed some war crimes but that's not the Joshua Graham of today. Or if you do not wish to kill my man, once you complete the DLC, you will have a bunch of Honest Hearts DLC stuff like armors and different weapons inside this nice little beautiful chest right here, and a light and shining darkness will be right in there waiting for you. The next weapon we are going to be talking about is going to be a Gun Runner's Arsenal weapon, and that is going to be a unique variant of the 12.7mm pistol. Now the Little Devil, of course, just like almost every other unique weapon, is going to do greater damage, it's going to have a faster fire rate, greater critical damage, and also has a lower AP cost, so when you enter VATS, you're not going to be wasting as much as you would with just the regular 12.7mm. And on this weapon, compared to the original, the barrel will be shorter, and you also have a nice beautiful black grip. And compared to the original, which is going to have about 395 shots before breaking, with the Little Devil you will be able to shoot about 595 shots before this thing actually breaks. Now the best part about this weapon is it's a level 1 holdout, which means you can sneak this thing anywhere you want to sneak it. If you want to sneak it into a casino, you can pretty much do that. You want to sneak this into Caesar's Legion, it's a level 1 holdout weapon, which means you really don't need any sneak whatsoever, you can take this thing anywhere you want. Now, here's the bad part about this weapon. The only way to get it is to buy it from Mick and Ralph's by Mick. And here, here's the even worse part, it's very expensive, like 22,000 caps expensive. So like the only way you're going to be getting this is if you just got back from the Sierra Madre and you stole all of the gold bars. Or you're just really good at scavenging and you just continue to sell stuff to the gun runners. This is a very expensive pistol, I kind of see why, because it's a level 1 holdout. But for me, I would rather spend all those caps on a couple other weapons than this one. The next thing we're going to be taking a look at is going to be a revolver called Lucky, arguably one of the coolest designs. And this is going to be a unique variant of the 350. Magnum. Now there's also another variant of this, that's the police pistol and dead money, but I really don't consider that to be a unique weapon. To me, that's just another weapon that they added in the game, so I'm not really going to be covering things like that. But like I said, Lucky is a variant of the 357 Magnum, and this one comes with the long barrel attachment already on it. With a lot of unique weapons, you can't add mods or anything like that, but with Lucky, it already comes with the long barrel. And also, it's going to use a very, very low amount of AP out of any revolver in the game. And also, this is an improved holdout weapon, which means if you have a high enough sneak skill, which is over 
50 I believe, you're going to be able to take this thing into casinos or anywhere else that would confiscate your weapons once you enter. And similar with every other unique weapon, if you take a look at the stats, Lucky will be dominating over the regular 357 Magnum. It's going to do more damage, higher rate of fire, higher critical hit chance, lower amount of action points, etc, etc. Now if you wish to get this gun, you can actually get it pretty early on as long as you have a high enough lockpick. It's going to be located in the Bison Steven Hotel inside of Prim. Once you enter inside, you're going to run into a couple powder gangers, but once you kill all of them, you want to come into this room right here, come right up to this safe right here on the floor, and if you have a lockpick of 75 or higher, you can open up this safe and inside will be lucky. So like I said, if you have a high enough lockpick, you could probably get this pretty early on in the game. So just spec all your points, all your points you get from leveling up straight into lockpick, and you will be able to get this gun pretty early on. The next gun we're going to be taking a look at is one of my personal favorite weapons to use in the game, and that is going to be Maria, which is a unique variant of the 9mm pistol, and compared to the original, Maria is going to have a higher rate of fire, more damage per shot, it's a lot more accurate, higher durability, and it will look incredibly sexy, and last but not least, it is also a holdout weapon if you have a high enough sneak. Now there is only one way to get Maria, but there are a many different ways to do that one way, if that makes any sense. The only way to get this is off of Benny. Benny is the son of a bitch that shoots you right at the beginning of the game, so whenever you get this weapon off of him, it feels like some pretty sweet revenge. There are a couple different ways to do it. During the game, as soon as you enter the strip, your job is going to be to find Benny and get the platinum chip. He will be located inside of the tops. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can handle this, and it all kind of boils down to three different ways. One, you can run right in and try to kill him with whatever weapons you can sneak in or just have, you know, Boone and Veronica do all the work. Two, you can talk to Swank the second you enter, and if you have a high enough speech, you can talk him into making Benny go up to his room, and you can meet Benny up there to where you can either talk to him and or kill him. Or three, you can just talk to Benny. And depending on how high your speech is and what perks you have, there are a lot of different ways this can go down. Uh, Benny can go up to the room with you and you can talk to him from there and or kill him. You can sleep with Benny, which I never recommend because why would you sleep with the guy that shot you in the face? If you don't have a high enough speech, Benny can trick you into going up into the penthouse where he tries to kill you, and then he will run off and get captured going to the fort by Caesar's Legion. And then if you want Maria, you have to make your way to the fort and get it from Benny there. But like I said, it all boils down to Benny. As long as you kill him or you pit pocket off of him, it really doesn't matter what you do, but I prefer just, you know, killing him. And this is one of my favorite weapons, mainly just because it's a unique version of the 9mm pistol, and 9mm ammo is very, very cheap and easy to acquire. So I always have Maria on me. It makes for a good holdout weapon once your sneak gets high enough. I love this weapon. There's actually a 3D printed version that you can find for sale somewhere, and I'm very, very tempted to get one because I just really like this gun. The next gun we'll be talking about is one of the more iconic weapons in the game. That is going to be the Mysterious Magnum, which is a unique variant of the 44 Magnum. Now, the thing that makes this thing so mysterious is whenever you holster it and or draw it out, you get these two tunes playing. And you might think that gets annoying over time, and let me assure you, it, it does not. It is very, very entertaining every time I draw it out, and it doesn't affect your sneak or anything like that, so every time you whip it out, it's not going to be alerting enemies or anything like that. And pretty much all across the board, stat-wise, this is going to be an improved version over the 44 Magnum, except in one area, and durability. This thing will break a lot faster than the 44 Magnum would. The regular 44 Magnum, with just regular shots, is going to shoot about 1,245 rounds, while the Mysterious Magnum's gonna get off about 745, so this thing will break a lot faster than the usual 44 Magnum. And this weapon is pretty easy to acquire. In the quest talent pool, you are sent to find entertainers for the tops, and one of the entertainers that you are directed to is going to be called the Lonesome Drifter. And while you are talking to him, you can actually pass a barter check of 50, and he will basically just give you the Mysterious Magnum. Now, if you don't have a high enough barter, and you're just like, you know what, I, I just feel like killing today, you can either pitpocket it from him, and or just kill him, you know, really whatever you want to do. But like I said, I really like this gun. The, the tune never gets old. I could, I could play it a million times, and it, it will always make my day. The next weapon we'll be taking a look at is going to be that gun, one of my preferred weapons in the entire game. It's a unique variant of the 5.56 pistol, and the cool thing about this weapon is along with Lucky, the revolver we talked about earlier, it's going to have the second highest critical hit chance multiplier of all 
small one-handed non-energy guns right after the silenced 22 pistol. And compared to the original 556, all the stats across the board are pretty much going to be in that gun's favor. Duh, it's a unique weapon. Now the only way to get this weapon is to head to Novak and go inside the big old dino. And once you're inside the dino, there are pretty much two different ways you can get this. One, you could be an upstanding Welcome citizen back. and actually just buy it off of Cliff. If you buy it off of Cliff, it's really not too expensive and by that time in the game you should be pretty well off on caps. Or you could do what pretty much everyone does and just steal it. You don't need a very high lockpick to actually unlock this door. Unlock it and it's going to be sitting right here as long as you're hidden and no one sees you. No one's really going to notice it's gone so, you know, why not just steal it? And I really love this gun. Usually when I'm playing Fallout New Vegas, if I'm doing a pistol type character, I always kind of revolve it around that gun. I, I don't know why. I just really love this gun. I love how it looks. I love how it feels. I love how it sounds. That gun is definitely one of my preferred weapons and it's very easy to get and you can get it very early on. So what's there not to love about that gun? Now the last and final pistol we will be talking about is going to be the weathered 10mm pistol. Now this is a pistol that you can only acquire in the Gunrunner's Arsenal DLC and is probably the easiest gun to get in the entire game because you spawn with it. As long as you have the Gunrunner's Arsenal DLC, you will spawn immediately with this pistol. And in case you could not tell, it is a unique variant of the regular 10mm pistol. And probably the best part about this gun, especially since you get it early on, is you don't need any gun skill to use this thing competently. So you could have a gun skill of zero and this gun is just going to work completely fine compared to its original counterpart, the 10mm pistol, which has a gun skill of 25 to use it to its full effect. But there is also a downside. The regular 10mm pistol is a holdout weapon. This one unfortunately is not. So there's a ying and a yang, I, I guess. But this pistol is very powerful and is very, very good early on. And you can actually add mods unlike a lot of other unique weapons. You can actually add mods to this one. You can get an extended mag, you can get a laser sight and a silencer. And I usually find myself using this weapon for a pretty long time until I actually get set up and get some pretty reliable weapons. Stats wise, it's gonna be of course a lot better than the regular 10mm pistol and you don't need a gun skill. Unfortunately, it's not a holdout weapon, but by the time I get to the strip, I usually have a couple good holdout weapons, so that is of no concern to me. The weather 10mm pistol is just a great weapon to spawn in with. It makes things a little bit easier. I mean, once you play Fall New Vegas a million times, I guess it doesn't really get much easier. But if you're playing on hardcore, sometimes it's better to have a little bit better of a pistol. So that's going to be every unique handgun in Fallout New Vegas. If you guys like this video, let me know if you guys thought I should do something differently or thought I should do something a different way. Let me know down below in the comments. I am open to suggestions and criticism. And also comment what type of weapon should I do next? Should we do rifles, energy weapons, shotguns, sniper rifles? Let me know down there below. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day, and before you go, make sure you guys check out all the links I have right down there in the description. I got my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord, and my Patreon links. So thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.